you very much, Sally, and you most certainly will not dare disobey the Lord Mayor in her, uh, in her house. So uh, can I also join you in acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respect to elders past and present. Also acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues who are sharing the forum with me tonight, uh, David Davis and Sam Gibbons. There's plenty of local, other local government representatives here today. And also too, to the forum organisers, thank you for bringing us together as Sally has indicated. We are coming, I think it's been characterised as we're heading into the fourth quarter, not quite there yet, but we're heading there in terms of the um, in terms of the political election season. And it's great to be here in this room tonight talking about public transport, but also too, it's exciting to talk about what's also being delivered. The days of talking about public transport, contemplating big projects, fighting for public transport, start fair share, those days are moving behind us because we're now moved from the phase of what we, uh, wouldn't it be nice to be doing these things in public transport, wouldn't it be nice to be seeing more infrastructure investment, to seeing real results being delivered on the ground. And tonight and in the months ahead, this will be a phase of where there will be a contest of ideas, there will be ideas put forward, policies proposed. But I hope you also understand that those ideas and policies are worthless unless they're translated into action. And that's certainly been the approach of the Andrews Labor government over the past four years, where we've translated those policies and commitments we took to the 2014 election into action. And that stood in stark contrast to the previous four years, that period between 2010 and 2014, where not a single major public transport project was undertaken in the state of Victoria. Not one was even started. And the contrast four years later could not be more stark. You see across Victoria, more than $30 billion has been invested in public transport projects. And uh, you can see right here, out the front of our town hall here, is great evidence of the work that is well and truly underway on the Metro Tunnel project. A project that was put on the shelf for four long years under the previous government, we now see at so many sites across the CBD work underway. Work underway on a transformational project that is now a year ahead of schedule. And it's about building those twin nine kilometre tunnels, five underground stations, this is work that's going on in the heart of the CBD that will benefit suburban lines and regional passengers as well. And places, suburbs and suburban lines like Cranbourne, Frankston, Sunbury, they're all big winners out of the construction that we're seeing in the heart of the CBD because of the chance to run more services on the metro, uh, on the metro tunnel uh, works. Level crossings. Now again, this is another important uh, part of our infrastructure story in public transport. 26 level crossings have now been removed. Gone, gone forever. When you compare that to the previous 10 years when we uh, came to office, only seven had been removed and we're on track for another three, taking it in a total of 29 gone by the end of the year. When you look at the Dandenong line, uh, certainly there was a lot of discussion about how we got on and removed those level crossings on the Dandenong line, but now we have no, not one single level crossing between Dandenong and the city, and it also means that we've been able to run more trains now, we're adding extra services to the Dandenong line, but we're also able to do so much more. New stations, opening up open space, 11 MCGs worth of open space, giving us the off-leash parks for, for dog lovers, the walking, cycling facilities that help connect communities. On our suburban network, in, a, in, a, in just a week, uh, just under two weeks, we'll be opening the Murna rail line, that eight kilometre extension. The last time the rail line was extended in this part of the world was by, started by a previous Labor government. We're now extending it from South Morang out to Murna, bringing nearly a thousand services each week to that growing community. We've uh, recently completed works on the Hurstbridge line, stage one works of the Hurstbridge line, and in regional Victoria, where, as many of you would know, I'm proud to call regional Victoria home, every single regional, regional passenger line is being upgraded. And we've had a really big job to do in our regional network. We've seen huge growth in patronage and passenger numbers on our regional network, and the last financial year saw V-Line carry about, around 18 million passengers just in that year alone. And we, so we've had a lot to do, adding extra services, building new, new tracks, uh, buying new rolling stock. And that was in, also in stark contrast when we came to government where we had a V-Line service that had really been run into the ground by the previous government and they'd taken $120 million out of such a vital service. 
for regional communities. Moving on to rolling stock, because of course there's no point, oh, there's lots of point in building that new track, but you've got to have the trains to run on the track to provide the extra services. And I'm really proud to say that we're a government that's not only buying new trains for our metropolitan and regional network, we're investing in new trams. We've, uh, we've also commissioned uh, a new metropolitan train, the high capacity metro train. We're making sure that investment pays off by our strong local content requirements that have breathed new life into our rolling stock manufacturing industry right here in Victoria. There is so much more too, and I'm mindful of the two bells, so I will move uh, beyond infrastructure in a moment, but there is so much more that we've been investing in, in new stations, in bike paths, more bus routes. We've invested around $200 million in around 500 new and improved bus routes, and we're also looking to the future. One of the things we don't want to leave, successive governments, is the situation we were faced with, which when we came to government and asked for the pipeline, the pipeline of projects and the plans that have been developed, the cupboard was bare. So we're now developing a pipeline of projects as well as delivering those that are underway. We're looking for the future to address some of those issues that Sally talked about around how do we support a growing city and a growing state. And that's why we've been working really hard on making sure that the benefits that can come from a future airport rail link, connecting obviously the CBD of Melbourne to Victoria's airport, how we can drive that investment further with good planning and strategic thought so that we can open up uh, the regions to connect in, particularly our regional centres like Geelong and Ballarat to give them a connection into the airport, which is why we worked very hard and recently announced that the Sunshine alignment was our preferred alignment for an airport rail link. We've, so we've made a lot of progress and some of it was in the election commitments we made in 2014 and so many other areas we've gone beyond that as well. And this is all about what sits behind this big infrastructure project. Yes, it's exciting to talk about concrete and steel and to see the jobs that are being created, the construction jobs, the supply jobs, the service industry jobs that come along with this big infrastructure project. But it's all with an eye on understanding that public transport is a vital public service. It helps get people to where they want to go. It helps connect people to jobs, to uh, medical appointments, to their education opportunities, to their social functions. It is such an important and vital connector that we understand really keenly, which is why we're not just investing in infrastructure, we're also working on the policy settings to make sure that we also have future plans in place and are working on the right suite of projects right across Victoria. And that's where I just wanted to touch on some of those planning approaches we've been taking. The Andrews Labor government has established Infrastructure Victoria to provide the government with independent advice on infrastructure priorities in the short, medium and longer term uh, distance. We've also established Transport for Victoria. For the first time, we now have a coordinated approach to both public transport and road network planning, bringing into effect, if you like, the, the principles and the spirit and the policy of the Integrated Transport Act uh, through Transport for Victoria. And we're prioritising, as a result of that coordination, projects on merit. And a, and a great example of that, and I know this might be touching um, a bit of a point with some in the room, is when it comes to the Metro Tunnel project. With the Metro Tunnel project, a project that went through the business case phase, the independent environmental effects statement, was assessed by Infrastructure Victoria, Infrastructure Australia. Through that process, they all indicated that a second um, train station at South Yarra did not stack up as part of that project. We weren't blind to the fact, and we certainly worked through how we needed to make improvements to the South Yarra station. However, a cost of billions of dollars, the impact it would have on hundreds of homes, and also the delay it would cause to a, a vitally important project. And given that there wasn't, on the other side of the ledger, a significant uplift in passenger services, given that South Yarra commuters would continue to get uh, the services that they received with a train around every two minutes, we felt that we had to make the right call on that project. And it's important to point this out, because this might be something that will come up and as an example of how you need to plan for the future. And we've taken the decision that, given the size and scale of that investment, given that it wouldn't have the necessary uplift in service provision more broadly, we had to make that, uh, make that decision. And I know our political opponents have a different view, that there, there's a unity ticket there to build a second station in South Yarra, only a couple of hundred metres down the road 
from uh, the existing South Yarra station, but we've had to take a whole of transport network perspective and make sure we're making the right investments in the right place based on that right, uh, uh, right detailed and thoughtful advice that we've provided by our various agencies. Now we're here in the heart, of course, of the, the City of Melbourne and the City of Melbourne is um, such an important uh, economic area, it's such an important uh, a provider of education and health services and a place where so many of us love to come and spend our uh, recreation time as well. So that's why there's work going on right around the heart of the CBD of Melbourne as well. You can look a little bit further across the road and see the, the wonderful work that's gone on by some incredibly talented um, talented uh, construction industry workers with the Flinders Street Station redevelopment. We've implemented the free tram zones. We've also introduced the night network. And this is something because it was a few years ago now that uh, has uh, perhaps become part of our everyday 24 hour public transport on a Friday and Saturday evening, one of only a couple of cities in the world that provides this. There is so much more I could go on with, and I promise you, I hope like, there is uh, more chance later on. But we, if we are elected, we've got another suite of projects where we're going to plan for the future, continue the work we're doing on metro tunnel level crossings. We're very proud of our track record in the Andrews Labor government, but we understand keenly that there is so much more to do. We're a government that has been working very hard to get it done, and we're absolutely determined to continue this work rate, to continue this investment in public transport services because it means so much for people in our community. Thank you.